Hi, this is a quick tutorial on how I like to set up my AngularJS controllers using TypeScript. Let me guide you through the application. We have a simple div displaying the current count. We have two buttons to increase and decrease the count. And then we have two input boxes bound to the same item in the view model. Now let's write this controller. Since we are using TypeScript, I'm going to use a class to write the controller. Any dependencies that we need from AngularJS, we can take as parameters to our constructor. So I'll just add a constructor. And if I need access to scope, I'll add scope as a constructor argument and Angular would inject it for me. And let's just expose a simple variable to show that it works. I'll just create a new count variable and I already have this displayed. I'll just do a refresh and you can see that we've exposed a variable on the scope. Now let's talk about minification. Once this JavaScript file is minified, this parameter name called $scope might be renamed and AngularJS would no longer be able to inject it for us. So the way to get around that is that we can have a static variable on our class called $inject and assign it an array of our dependencies, which in our case is a simple dollar scope. Once we do that, we are actually free to rename our constructor parameters, whatever we want. Let's just call it S. And since we have this static variable on our class, AngularJS would still be able to figure out that, okay, we need to take dollar scope. Let's just take another dependency just, just to demonstrate that. So if you have another dependency, you can do that and you can call it whatever you want. And you would see that this would still work. Having said that, I still prefer to call this the same as the actual dependency name, it, just to be more explicit. An additional thing that I like to mention is that I like to keep these right close to each other so that it's easy to maintain that, okay, if I have a new dependency, I add it to this as well as over here. The next thing that I'd like to mention is that of instead of exposing variables directly on the scope, I prefer them to have as instance members. So for example, I can have count as a number over here and I can even initialize it to like 10. And then what I would do is that I would just add a variable called view model to the scope and I would assign it to this instance. And to use it from the view, I'll go through the view model every single time. And you can see that it should still work. If I change this, it still works. And there are multiple reasons for doing this. Having these as class members allows me to have my code better structured. For example, I can have a member function called increment and all that I would do is that this dot count plus plus and I can have another member function called decrement and I can do this dot count minus minus and if I do a reload I have these wired up to vm dot increment and vm dot decrement if I did not do this I would be placing all that logic over here, for example, dollar scope dot increment is equal to an inline function over here. And what happens in that case is that I cannot override these in base classes and stuff like that. This way, it's very easy to come up with an object hierarchy in, at a later stage as well. One more advantage is that I can come up with an interface. that I can pass to the designer who will be working on just the views and not on the controllers. So I can tell the designer over here that, okay, I will give you something that will have a count member, which would be of type number and an increment function, which would take nothing and return nothing and a decrement function, which would similarly take nothing and return nothing. And, uh, it's very easy for the designer to see that, okay, these are the things that are available to me in the view. And I will enforce that my controller implements this 
So if I change this at some later point, TypeScript would complain that I no longer implement this interface, which would force me to modify the interface and it would be easy for the designer to see that the interface has changed, so he needs to update his view. One final advantage has to do with scope inheritance. So if I have a member variable on the scope called message and I display it over here directly from the scope you will see that that variable is showing uh, one more thing that I need at the moment is that I need a boolean variable on the scope and you can see that we have two input elements bound to the same element on the scope however once I update this this is updated but if I change this you can see that they are no longer linked and the reason for that is that this is inside a new scope because every single directive not every single but most of the directives create a new scope and this scope inherits prototypically from the parent scope which means that you can read any variable from the parent scope but as soon as you modify it you get a new variable on the child scope which is not related to the parent scope so if I reload that the behavior is that if I modify this, they are fine. But if I change this once, they are no longer linked. But if you use the guidance of not exposing variables directly on the scope, but exposing them as members of the class, and then go through the view model, Since it is no longer creating a new property, but only reading a member from VM. So this VM would be the same between the parent and the child. If we were to modify this one, they continue to be linked to each other. So to reiterate, use a static variable called $inject for your dependency injection and keep it as close to your constructor as possible for easy maintainability. Do not expose variables directly on the scope, especially when you are going to write to them. Instead, use instance variables and just assign the instance to a member on the scope. And finally, use a interface between your controller and your view to make the designer as well as your life simpler. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.